You can take my classy wig now, too. She's done. <laughs> There's no more jazz left, I promise. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah, I forced you to sit through six minutes of me singing about a relationship, and I'm aware of how painful that is. <laughs> I really, I really am. That's why I never bring him up to people, is it's like complicated having another person because it makes you not interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's the thing is we're not committed, and I can't bring Doug up because I'm trying to get laid. <laughs> and when I talk about him, the audience looks at me just like they did after I finished that number where they're like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm proud of you, I guess, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, no, it's boring. I'm trying to fuck, and nobody wants to hear about how my um, non-monogamous relationship is so much better than your shitty monogamous <laughs> Or whatever. It's true. I'm sorry. I do think it's. I, I think. I think monogamy is stupid. I think. <laughs> like. I think you can be committed without the idea of owning another person fully. But it's so hard for people to believe that because I feel like we've all been hurt so much, and we. We all. Oh, you think they're all cheaters? You know what? Let's. That's actually perfect because this takes me to another exercise I want to do. <laughs> And it's about cheaters, okay? Because I think this is something that a lot of humans have experienced in one way, shape, form, or another. And I just want to know if my personal heartbreak might be the reason why I am a non-monogamous now. So, uh, we're going to do an exercise, okay? We're, I'm going to say some things, and if they apply to you, raise your hand and keep it raised until the end. But I... Also, don't want you to feel judged by everyone. So to do this, I'm going to close my eyes. All right, remember, keep your hand raised until the end. Raise your hand if you have ever been cheated on. Raise your hand if you've ever thought your partner was cheating on you. Raise your hand if you ever thought about cheating on your partner. Raise your hand if you ever have cheated on your partner. It's the hard one, don't worry, I'm not judging you. And keep your fucking hands raised, because we're not done. I want you to keep your hand raised, or raise your hand, if you have ever known someone who has cheated on their partner, been cheated on by a partner, thought about cheating on their partner, and thought about their partner cheating on them. Okay, okay, I'll keep those hands raised. I'm about to take away mine. Oh, what? <laughs> you too? Humans love cheating. That's why we invented it. I've cheated. I've been cheated on. It's sexy. It's hot. That's why I got married. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Let me flip my picture of my husband. <laughs> We love that shit. It is spicy, okay? And the thing is, I want to I wanna at least embrace that up front. And the thing is, clearly, everybody or most people feel it in some way, shape, or form. Have felt that. So, if... Hey, y'all. Uh, shut the fuck up, faggots. <laughs> We're not allowed to call them that. I give them cocaine sometimes. I give them <laughs> Only when I need them to make things for RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> they did it twice. <laughs> so, fuck your relationships. <laughs> Especially, God damn it, I got distracted by cocaine. Same. <laughs> Same. Honestly, the, the heart, uh, yeah, monogamy. Monogamy sucks. Blah, 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 blah. It's hard because if you're going to be mad about your partner cheating on you, they better at least be doing it. <laughs> okay, at least that's how I fucking feel. I don't like being upset about nothing, you know? If, if my husband isn't looking me in the eyes, he better be fucking a ghost. <laughs> I'm like fucking Casper, just like looking through him and shit, getting that kink in. But anyways, whether or not 
these jokes have been uncomfortable for you because you're sitting next to your partner who you are monogamous with today. <laughs> Congratulations, I hope you stay together forever. <laughs> I think there is one thing that we can all accept about ourselves and, and that's that we need to be a little bit better about, about um, taking care of the people in your life, including yourself, about spreading the love in the right ways. And this all boils down from one of my favorite RuPaul quotes, actually. Peanut, 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 peanut. Must be jelly, cause jam don't shake. No, no, it comes from that RuPaul quote. Uh, if you can't love yourself, how the hell? You gotta love somebody else. Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. Drugs, RuPaul, that's how. <laughs> it's true, I already talked about cocaine a little bit. I love drugs, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> drugs fix everything, almost. Um, <laughs> This is, and, and I love drugs because uh, uh, this is for the children out here. I really wish I still had my dick on. I know it didn't fall out, I'm bad at grooming. <laughs> children, I am your local life, life inspiration, Evie Oddly. And I am here to tell you that I love drugs. And yes. you know why I love drugs, children? Because I'm a human. It is so boring. It is such a boring answer. It can't even be because, like, yeah, my mom got me started. My aunt gave me my first crack pipe or whatever. No, I love drugs because I'm human. We are all wired to. Ever since we got consciousness forced on us, we've been trying to get rid of that shit. <laughs> I don't want that responsibility. Are you kidding me? At least for five minutes, I need a break. And I think the people who understand this more than almost anyone else are people who are on a journey towards sobriety. Do I have any sober people in the house tonight? We were really passionate about it. Ten months? Five months? You're a fucking liar. Don't fucking clap for this piece of shit ass liar. You're not sober right now. This piece of shit! It's not sober right now, and it's, I'm sorry to call you out in front of everybody. You were clearly so proud of your five months. They are fucked up right now. I can see it in the eyeballs, and I'm gonna tell you why. Wanna know why I know you're not sober? Because Webster's Miriam Dictionary, Wikipedia, uh, <laughs> defines drugs as number one, fun. <laughs> they just are. Uh, and number two, a substance or chemical that alters your perception, your brain, your chemicals, um, your taste, your sight, your smell, your sound, your feel, your fuck. Basically, a drug is something that comes into your life. <laughs> There's no punchline there. <laughs> That's where it ends. That's what drugs are. And so, you sick, lying, piece of shit ass bitch. <laughs> Sorry, I don't trust addicts. <laughs> you already lied once. You already lied once tonight, so I'm gonna call you out on your shit in front of everybody. And now that we already know you're high, I want you to answer this question very clearly for me. Are you breathing some goddamn air at me right now? <laughs> You can't help it. Okay, so you're telling me that you couldn't just be sitting there not breathing air, not getting high as fuck off of air, and instead just be like, oh, I'm dying or whatever because I don't have any air. But instead you're just like sitting here breathing air, getting so fucking high off of it that you don't even realize you're lying to all these people like, I'm clean, I've been clean for five months. This person is thrashed! <laughs> And that is how drugs work. You will find a replacement drug because they exist everywhere. Okay, I, I, I had a bagel this morning. Uh, and, you know, my day was pretty fucking bad before then. But then I had this bagel. And it made me so happy, even for just a split second. I was high off of bagel. I was like, I no longer want to kill myself. <laughs> We'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> I, 
I love drugs for that reason, and that's why from a, a not too young, but a decently young age, I made it my goal to try all of the drugs that I've ever wanted to try without completely ruining my life. I'm, I'm saving a little bucket list if I ever get cancer. <laughs> Don't you want to fight it? It's just a tiny little, uh-uh, bitch, give me the heroin. I, I, I'm glad I tried everything that I've wanted to try. Um, like, from the club drugs, like, like Coke and ketamine, to like hippier, dippier shit, like Molly and mushrooms Woo! and accidental men. <laughs> you caught it, didn't you? <laughs> I am. Uh, I get a pass for that one because that's not my fault. That's all. That's also your fault, Denver. <laughs> Legitimately, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna give y'all a very quick history lesson about me. All right, very quick history. This is gonna be so boring for the bitches who already know me. I live in Denver. Come from Denver. Worked at the biggest nightclub in Denver and lived a block away from that nightclub in indentured fagitude with all of the other queers who worked at that nightclub. Which means I was bred in meth country and then thrown full force into like where shit happens. Like the way, I lived in the kind of place where neighbors would just like burst in like, yeah! Like dressed exactly like me, like, what bitch? <laughs> I remember the first time I did accidental math. <laughs> I was like, I was uh, just like working on this dress in my living room and shit with my roommates, and and then some gay just like burst in, like, yeah! <laughs> Good morning, bitches. Happy Monday. <laughs> Who wants a breakfast bump? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I really can't. I'm working on this dress, it's important. And my roommate was like, yes. <laughs> Which automatically changed my answer to yes. <laughs> and then you cut to like three sleepless days later and all three of us are huddled around this shitty little paper dress like a bunch of Smeagols. Like, <laughs> <sighs> Oh, my precious, oh, so beautiful. Oh, cut more green paper, don't touch it, don't touch it. <laughs> like occasionally getting breaks of clarity, like, girl, I think that was mad. <laughs> and then hopping back in like, I oh, know it was mad. <laughs> Whatever, no, no regrets, no apologies. <laughs> Legit, uh, that, that dress I was working on was probably one of the coolest things I have ever made, and it was definitely the best part of my first Drag Race audition tape. Yeah, yeah like, if you've, if you've seen any of uh, my, like, actual Snatch games on the show, you can, you can guess how bad that audition was. <laughs> <laughs> But ask me to like make some dress out of paper or some shit, and I give you the the fucking meth Michelangelo. <laughs> Rest in peace. I lost her to Cappy. <laughs> it's made of paper. <laughs> Actually, though, that experience did help me realize that I have a favorite drug, and no, it is not accidental meth. <laughs> It's purposeful, Matthew Cody! Fuck you, call me up here! Oh my god! I'm kidding, I can never. My life can't handle that kind of productivity. <laughs> I'm afraid of seeing my floors. <laughs> Answer, but she is a fierce ass drug, especially since when you first start doing drug, the people in your life interrogate you like you're a drug addict. <laughs> you're like, hey, did you see where my nice jewelry went? <laughs> Why do you always come home at 
4 a.m. smelling like hookers. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm just glad it never got to like full sit down, breakthrough crying, drug addict status where you're like pulling out pictures like, is this you? Are you on drugs right now? <laughs> I don't recognize you when you're in drugs. You're not my boy. I've lost you to drugs. I know it's not a good one. I wrote that one for all the children I kept from attending tonight. That's my PBS special. But, uh, you know, it is my favorite drug I've ever done, even though it has wrecked my body, my bank account, and my sex life. <laughs> Time and again, don't worry, not right now, I'm doing great. <laughs> Hot streak. <laughs> I should be getting tested every week. <laughs> should be. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's, it, despite all the things that it has ever hurt, it is the one thing that gave me something very special about uh, drag as a drug, and that is that it also somehow made my life feel a little more rich in some fucking way. It made it feel rich in a way that lasted even when I wasn't doing drag. And that's what I fucking love about it because it showed me all the things that are worth pouring into about myself, all the things that I like about myself, taking some time to look in the mirror and find some beauty even if you have to fucking paint. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, it really is such a magical drug because I want you to like look around at how many people are in this room right now. And I want you to contemplate the fact that by being in this room with me, that means you're hooked on drag. You are all drag users too. <laughs> Even if you just got dragged here by your partner, you still got dragged. And, and I want you to think about the fact that, like, anywhere else, if, if there was this many of anyone on almost any other really good drug, it would be burnt the fuck down. <laughs> We'd be, like, stabbing each other and shit, crawling on the ceilings, you know? And um, I'm so thankful that I got to do this tonight. I do have to say, sadly, we have come to the end of my show. <laughs> Don't say no like you really want to stand here and listen to me fucking talk forever. <laughs> this isn't this isn't your fucking after party. Nobody has given me any cocaine, even though I've said that word three times now. <laughs> Expecting it to just like fall out of the sky or some shit any minute. I don't trust your cocaine. <laughs> Listen, we all have agendas here, okay? If you, wanna, if you wanna see me and find me in the airport looking disgruntled and depressed, then be like, I know this is so rude. Oh, you probably hate this. And then fist me. <laughs> but we are at the end of my show, and so first I wanna say thank you all so much for spending so much time with me. a little general because it's, it's for um, a person who has changed my life so dramatically in ways that I never could have imagined and she's here with us. Woo!